Stamp with Amy K, YouTube Live, and thanks so much for everybody joining today. I appreciate you being here. Uh, today, I'm going to show you a card that I made with the Peaceful Cabin Stamp Set Bundle from Stampin' Up. It is one of the new ones from the uh, upcoming mini catalog that starts actually on August 3rd. Um, so if you are joining today, feel free to say hello and let me know that you're here. And if you're watching the replay, that is awesome as well. So, hey, Daryl, glad that you're joining today. I um, hope that you like the card and hope that you, uh, you know, have fun watching the video. <laughs> so, all right, so this is the card that we are making today. And um, I used, again, mostly new products and because I love them all. <laughs> this is the uh, Peaceful Cabin Bundle, Stamp Set Bundle. And I used some of the Peaceful Place Designer Series paper on the background. And then a little bit, you can see a little peek of the silver uh, foil paper from the Silver Foil Specialty Pack that will all be available beginning on August 3rd. So these are awesome items that are available now to demonstrators. So if you're a demonstrator, you can pre-order these items. Um, if you are not a demonstrator but are interested in getting your hands on the items early, um, let me know. I'd be happy to chat with you about joining um, because you can add these items to your starter kit, which is really awesome. So, all right. Hey, Jing and Rosie, thanks for joining today. Um, I don't know how well you can see it. You can see it really well on the paper, you know, when it's in your hand, but the, the, um, Peaceful Place paper, one side of each page has really pretty silver foil uh, accents on it, I guess is what I'd call it. So the, the littler snowflakes on this background paper are actually silver foil, and it's absolutely a stunning pack of paper, and it's a beautiful stamp set bundle, so you definitely need it all. <laughs> all right. Uh, hey, Jerry, thanks for joining today. So this is the Peaceful Cabin stamp set. Again, a good um, general winter one, uh, or again, it can be Christmas or holiday if you want it to be. And um, like I said, just I love the, the images in it. I love the mixed fonts in it just another good one. So they're all good, but this one's really good. <laughs> and of course, you know, I'm a sucker for the coordinating dies. This one is a little bit different um, as far as the die set goes. Hey, Christy and Bree and Barbara and Shelly and Danette and Lori, thanks so much for joining us today. So this die set is a little bit different than one of the typical ones. This one actually is designed to cut out. Uh, there are a couple of dies in here that are designed to cut out um, what you turn into like a winter scene. So we've got the trees. This one will cut out around the trees after you stamp them. And it will cut like a little snowbank next to it. Same thing with the little cabin. When you stamp that, it will die cut it and put a little snowbank on it. And then there's this one little cool one that if you may not recognize it, what it is initially, because it's kind of an odd looking little thing, but it actually fits over the little fox. So if you wanted to die cut the fox and have him walking in front of, <laughs> you know, down a little snowy hill in front of the trees or the cabin or whatever, um, you can do that with a fox. So it's really cool. Um, there is also just the little individual die that will cut out the fox. So if you don't want to have to do the whole snow hill with it, you can do just the little fox. Um, there's one that's just a, a random little fence. And then this one actually die cuts the stamped fence. And we're going to be playing with that one today. These dies are actually designed to cut out, they lay over the top of the trees and kind of cut out peek throughs in the trees, if that makes sense. Um, I did not use them on my card today, but you definitely can. It just gives it a little different, a little more of a textured look. And there is a, a third die over here that cuts um, that tree. So again, just a, a little different look if you're interested in that. And then there are just some little individual trees here, a little snowflake background, and then a cute little cabin as well. And again, this doesn't coordinate with the stamped image. It just cuts out a little cabin all on its own. So again, it's a great die set and we're going to be playing with all these goodies today. So let me stack these up and get them out of the way. Hey, Karen, glad you're here as well. A um, couple things, oh, actually, you know what? A couple more things that um, I used on this uh, card. I actually used these stitched rectangle dies, which again, it's probably a little difficult to see. You can see it again when it's in your hand, you can see it pretty easily. But I used that to cut out all the layers here on the front of the card, and I used the second largest one um, to cut out the background and then the, these two pieces as well. And what else did I use? The Hippo and Friends dies. I used this one, which is sort of, I don't know, a round square, if that makes sense. <laughs> a decorative square. I'm sure there's some word for it, but round square seems like a odd thing to call it. But anyway, so this is the Hippo and Friends die set. Both of these die sets are available in the annual catalog, so they're available now 
interested in purchasing them. If you don't have these die sets, they're definitely ones that you need. So, hey, Meryl, thanks for joining today. On the inside of the card, I did a little bit of stamping with uh, one of the other stamp sets. This, again, is a stamp set from the annual catalog. I don't know if you've looked through the annual catalog very carefully, but there are some holiday and Christmas items peeking throughout that catalog, and this is one of them. So this is the Trimmings and Tidings stamp set. Um, this is actually available in a bundle with some dies that coordinate with it. We're not using anything other than the one sentiment from it, so I did not pull out the dies on this one, but that is available um, at, with a set of dies in the annual catalog. All right, a couple things, and then I promise I will get started on the card. Uh, designer Series Paper Sale, Stampin' Up! has one going on right now. 15% um, off any of these nine Designer Series papers from the annual catalog. There are some really good ones, and there is a Christmas paper in here as well. So if you want to get a little early start at a discount on your um, Christmas cards, uh, these papers are all on sale through August 2nd for 15% off. Uh, the details are posted on my blog about that, which is stampwithamyk.com, so feel free to stop by and um, look it over and ask me any questions if you have any and yeah I have definitely got my money's worth out of those darn hippo dies <laughs> I use them all the time I can't help it it's just such a good set of dies so um, stamp it up actually well actually that your states many of the local states uh, well, I shouldn't say many because there's 13 I think in total um, have sales tax holidays that are coming up Alabama, unfortunately, if you didn't get ordered already, you've missed yours. But Arkansas, Florida, um, Missouri, Massachusetts, uh, Mississippi, I think it's the one. Yeah, Mississippi, New Mexico, Ohio, Puerto Rico, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia all have upcoming sales tax holidays. And some of the items from the Stampin' Up! catalog qualify for a you can order them tax-free during your sales tax holidays. Um, so if you have questions about this uh, or want to take a closer look at it, I know it's teeny tiny and you can't read any of the stuff on it, um, go out to my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com, and search for sales tax holiday, and a blog post with that uh, will pop up, and you can print it out and um, take a peek for yourself. Or if you can't find it, just drop me an email at amy at stampwithamyk.com, and I'll send you the link. So. Oh, you don't pay sales tax at any time in Delaware? You are lucky. I lived in Oregon, and we didn't for, you know, what I lived there either. But, yeah, New Jersey, not so much. <laughs> we kind of get stuck with a lot of taxes here. So, all right, so let's get started on the card. I've started with a Smoky Slate card base, and this one is cut to 5.5 and by 8.5 and, and scored at 4 and a quarter. Um, and then I've got a piece of the Peaceful Place Specialty Designer Series paper. So this is kind of the back side of it. Um, this is the side that's got the foiling on it, and I, it's just, it almost hurts me to put this down, but <laughs> this didn't go very well in the background um, with so much going on with the cabin, so I didn't want to put this up, um, so I used the more generic side instead. And it's cut to four and a half by, or I'm sorry, four and a quarter by five and a half. All the measurements are going to be out on my blog post tomorrow, and I will link up the blog post as soon as it goes live. Um, I'll put the, it in the description of this video. Um, and it'll go live around 8 o'clock Eastern Time on Saturday morning. So all the measurements will be posted out there because a lot of times I say them wrong when I'm in the video because I'm in the middle of whatever and I think I have it right and then I don't. <laughs> so, so check the blog post if anything sounds crazy that I'm saying and you're like, mm, I don't think that measurement's right. Um, check there. So, hey, Wendy, thanks for joining. All right, so we've got that adhered together. Again, just use the little multi-purpose liquid glue. And ahead of time, I went ahead and die cut the background piece. Again, this is the designer paper, the um, Peaceful Place specialty designer paper. And the little snowflakes in here have the silver foiling on them. So I did use that one pretty side up, although I love the plaid too. So, you know, <laughs> it's all, it's a great pack of paper. Um, I'm going to use a little stamp and seal. We're going to adhere these together. I have, this is a piece of the silver foil specialty pack um, paper. And it's cut to three and a half by four and seven eighths. And we're just going to adhere these two pieces together with a little stamp and seal. Sorry, hopefully the glare wasn't too terrible um, with that foil paper and the lights. But, you know, try to keep it lit up so you can see what I'm doing. But um, I know the lights kind of glare on things obnoxiously as well. So, all right, so we've got those two adhered together. And then I'm going to adhere them to the card front with a stamp and seal as well. I shouldn't have closed all that up. And the main thing with this piece is just to make sure that you get it fairly centered, if you want it centered. If you don't want it centered, well, then you don't have to do that. But <laughs> I usually tend to try to get mine centered and fairly straight. And it's sometimes a little challenging, so I try to line it up on my grid paper. 
and sort of use the grid lines as my kind of visual line. If I could stretch it right through, then, you know, then it kind of gives me a little bit, a little bit to aim for. I don't always get it on perfectly straight, but that's okay. It's handmade. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. All right, next up, we're going to do a little stamping. And um, you will notice that these are definitely oversized pieces for what I need. So it fits, you know, you definitely want it to have a little extra overhang. So you only need it to be as wide as this, but you want it to be a little bit wider just so that you have a little room to play with these um, dies. Because when you're using these seam type dies, it's nice to have a little, little wiggle room to the right or to the left of them when you go to do to layer it up, um, just because if you don't get it stamped perfectly, then you don't have to redo it all. So, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna start with a tree image and I've got basic gray ink and I'm just gonna ink up the tree image. And again, I'm gonna, what I should have shown you first is when I do the die cuts or when I have the die cuts, you'll wanna definitely take a look at how the die cuts are gonna land on your paper. So as you can see, the trees are kind of over to the left-hand side of the paper. So make sure that as you're stamping the trees, you kind of have your stamp over towards the left-hand side. If you stamp them in the middle, you're going to end up with this, which is fine. But then you have a spot here where you're going to have to cut it <laughs> and um, try to make it look pretty or cover it with something else. So um, if you want it to, to cut with the die without having to fiddle around with it or mess around with things too much. Just make sure that, sure that you have it slid over a little bit to the left-hand side of the paper. And hopefully while I was yapping, um, the ink didn't dry completely on here. And again, you don't have to worry a lot about having it stamped exactly perfectly straight or anything like that because you're gonna be layering up the images and you're gonna be die cutting. So again, the main thing is you just wanna make sure that you have it so that your die is gonna cut where you want it to cut. All right, so I'm gonna set that piece of paper aside and, oh, I was gonna say, did I lose my, okay. Then I've got another piece of paper here. Again, this one I've definitely got oversized as well. And again, you wanna put your, the die down that you're gonna be cutting with so that again, generally you know where you wanna stamp your image at. So I've got my cabin die here, or cabin um, stamp. And again, you'll note that this, it's kind of slid over to the left-hand side. Again, you can cut it and put it in the middle, but then you're gonna have to deal with the edge over here. Um, so I am planning to, to aim it so that I've got the cabin a little bit to the left, so that I've got a little bit of, again, a little bit of wiggle room here. So I've got basic gray ink, and I'm also gonna stamp the cabin in the basic gray ink. All right. And flip that over, and I think we'll stamp it about right there. All right, and then the final little piece that I need to stamp is actually the fence post, or the fence, not the fence post, this is the, the little fence. So I'm gonna stamp that and die cut that as well. And again, I'm just using basic gray ink with that and just stamping it on a little scrap piece of paper here. Um, and I actually stamped it totally upside down, but that's okay, again, because I'm gonna be die cutting it, so no worries. All right, so I'm gonna take these over to my die cutting machine, which is over here to my right, and I'm gonna cut them out. So again, the, the cabin die is actually fairly easy to line up. There's a spot here that you'll be able to see an opening there. And then you can line up, what I found easiest was to line up the chimney first, and then kind of wiggle it around and adjust it to fit the rest of the cabin. So it fits around it pretty nicely. Same thing with the trees, just kind of line up at the top, figure out where the top of your tree is, and then that's where you're going to die cut it at. You're going to run it right through the die cutting machine that way. So hang on, I'll be off screen for a second. Feel free to chatter amongst yourselves. <laughs> Hopefully you're having a good Friday. Um, been pretty quiet around here, which is good. And, you know, never complain about that. Um, while I'm die cutting all this, I just wanted to remind you that I do have a designer series paper share from the mini catalog that I'm offering. And this paper that we're using today is actually in the share, and um, it, there's some really good papers in that catalog. So you definitely want to go take a peek, which it's posted out on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. And um, again, the details are all posted out there, so feel free to take a look. And if you're interested in joining, uh, let me know. I can only offer paper shares to people in the United States because Stampin' Up! doesn't allow me to send a product outside the U.S. So... Um, if you all live in, in other countries, I'm sure that there are probably demonstrators in your country that are offering shares as well. So take a peek for those. Oh, thank you, Rosie. You're out there chit-chatting for me. <laughs> so, all right. 
get the tree I cut here. The last little piece I need to cut is the fence. Hopefully that will go fairly quickly. Find the dot. Oop. Yeah, it's a pretty day here in New Jersey. Um, I live about an hour straight west of New York City. So if you don't know that, I'm kind of out in the middle of nowhere in New Jersey in the countryside, which an hour from New York City is actually in the country here. So, <laughs> um, all right, so let me get this out of the way so I don't hopefully lose those dies. Hopefully they won't crash all over the floor either. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer these one on top of the other and I'm just gonna hold them <laughs> in, in uh, the place where I want them to be. And um, I don't, again, it doesn't need to be a perfectly layered up whatever, just kind of generally where I want it to be. And hopefully you can see there are two, two separate snow hills here. So we've got the one for the cabin and then the one for the trees. And I'm just kind of moving it around a little bit, trying to figure out exactly where I want that to land on my card front. And then I'm gonna take my die here hopefully my second largest i should just pull the dies over here the <laughs> second largest of the stitched rectangle dies and uh, i'm going to go ahead and put this right over the top like this kind of figure out again where i want the tops of the trees to land and then i'm going to run it through my die cutting machine and cut both pieces at the same time so that i end up with everything lined up the way that i want it to be for the card front and i'm using actually the same die that i used to cut the background panel here so everything once I'm done with it should line up and should be the same size <laughs> that is unless I have a massive cutting failure which you know sometimes I do things that are crazy <laughs> and end up with things that don't look the way that they should um, but anyway so if you want to you, and want to make sure that things stay in the exact place that you were wanting them you can take a little touch of adhesive and just put it kind of in a spot that will be hidden on the the um cardstock panels and stick the two panels together. Or you can just do what I do and um, just sort of layer them together like this and run them through the die cutting machine because, you know, if, if things move and shift a little bit, it's not the end of the world because this isn't something that needs to be really precisely cut. So, oh, thanks, Diane. I appreciate that. And thank you, Rosie. I appreciate that as well. So let me get the die cutting done on this and I'll be back over in a second. Now, each one of these that you do, you're probably going to end up with just a slightly different um, layering because it's really hard unless you use your stamparatus and cut everything at the same time to end up with something that's exactly, exactly the same. Um, again, just because things move around and you, know, you may not get them lined up exactly the same way when you're doing the die cutting. All right, so those are my two pieces and they're die cut. And again, they should layer up with the card front perfectly. Well, as perfectly as I can get them to be <laughs> once I layer them together. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of stamp and seal, and that's what we're going to use to adhere down the, the little trees. And you don't need to do a huge amount of it on there. Um, just kind of run it uh, wherever you think you're going to need it. And then we're going to take it, and hopefully I'm on the screen still, going to take it and line it up down here at the bottom where your designer series paper is, and you're just going to layer it directly over the top of that. So super easy. Next layer, we're gonna do a couple little Stampin' Dimensionals. Hey, Mar uh, Mar Margit, is that how you say your name? Hopefully I'm not totally saying it wrong and I apologize if I am. <laughs> so, so glad that you're joining from Denmark. So that's awesome. So, oh, you think it's incredibly creative? I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of, it's incredibly easy and that's what I liked about it. So. You know, I'm kind of the lazy stamper, as you all know. This is, you know, doing things that are difficult is just not what I do. <laughs> I like to keep it simple. So um, the only thing I'm having trouble with is I need to get the pokey tool um, technique like Karen has for peeling or for picking these um, stampin' dimensionals. I'm always afraid I'm going to stab my finger if I try that, but <laughs> she can get them off there really quickly. So again, the same thing that I'm going to be doing here with this layer. I'm lining it up at the bottom and lining up the edges and just going to layer this right over the top and then once i know everything's in place where i want it to be then i'm going to kind of smoosh it down a little bit so that uh, all is good on it and the last piece that i have here for my little winter scene is the fence and i'm just going to take glue dots or you can use liquid glue whatever your preferred adhesive is 
Penny Oak, I'm glad that you like it. So it's, it is a beautiful stamp set bundle. It's a beautiful suite. Um, so if you haven't seen it or kind of skip past it in the catalog, go back and take a peek. It's on pages 36 and 37. Uh, in the new mini catalog. And uh, again, this will all be available starting on August 3rd, if you are not a demonstrator. And those darn glue dots are sticking to my fingers. <laughs> so, all right, so let's get the fence put down here. And I'm gonna go ahead again, it doesn't have to be any specific placement, just, I just wanted it to show up on the front, that's all, so. Uh, it's on your wish list, yes, it's a good, good set. So the paper, the catalog does not do it even close to justice. You need to see the paper in person. It's beautiful. Um, and I love the gray tones, which again, you know, I was like, oh, for the holidays, it's probably kind of drab. I'm not sure that I, yeah, I love it. <laughs> so definitely, definitely a good one. Um, the sentiment that I've got here, again, is from the uh, Peaceful Cabin stamp set bundle or stamp set. And I'm going to use Versamark ink and we're going to heat emboss it in silver embossing powder. And hopefully I won't mess this up too badly. I'm hoping I can get it cut. I kind of have a small piece of cardstock because I don't know. I was, <laughs> I guess I was being cheap and trying to get it done without having to cut up a whole new piece of cardstock. So I've got silver embossing powder here in my little container. And we're just going to sprinkle it on the stamped image. And if I forgot to say, I used Versamark ink to stamp that. And it's just stamped on basic white cardstock. Then I'm going to put the lid back on my embossing powder because if you've ever spilled yours, um, you will not forget to put the lid back on it again because it's a huge mess. Um, now we're going to heat emboss. So uh, this is the Stampin' Up! embossing tool and it has two settings on it. It has a level one setting and that's used for drying inks. So if you're doing things like watercoloring um, or something like that where you want to sort of hurry it up a little bit and dry the paper, you can use the level one setting. And the level two setting is hotter and it will do the heat embossing for you. So hopefully I've got this going here. Um, it may take just a second to start working its magic. There we go, it's starting. And hopefully you can see it on the screen. It starts to change color just a little bit and gets shiny. Um, that way you know that it's all done with the heat embossing. Once everything is shiny on it, you'll definitely want to turn your embossing tool off uh, because you can burn embossing powder. Again, ask me how I know because I've done it. <laughs> so, hey, Daryl. Oh, I'm glad that you like it. You definitely need to get this one. It's really a good one. So... All right, again, I've got this. This is the Hippo and Friends dies, and I'm going to be using this little die to cut out the sentiment. And it just barely, barely fits. The beautiful is like right on the edge of it, so it barely, barely fits inside here, but it does fit. Um, and I liked the look of it. I didn't, I thought about doing just a plain circle, but I thought, nah, plain circles are kind of boring. So I went ahead and used the Hippo and Friends dies. So I'm going to, again, hop off screen here to my right, and um, I'll be off screen for just a second doing the die cutting. I'm glad y'all are liking this bundle, this, you know, this card. It's, it's really, really pretty. I don't know. It took me a minute to kind of pull everything out. And like I said, I just wasn't sure that I was going to love it until I got it out. And I'm like, yes, I love it. <laughs> so it's definitely one of those must-get stamp set bundles. All right, so there we got the die cut sentiment all done. And last piece for the card friends, I just need to adhere this down and I'm gonna use some Stampin' Dimensionals to do that or my half Stampin' Dimensionals because again, if you watch my videos, you know that I'm kind of cheap and I <laughs> cut my Dimensionals in half. You can definitely use the full size ones if you like. Um, I just prefer the half size ones because they stick just as well. And um, I like the size of them better. I don't know, because I'm weird, I guess. And now I've got a few people on my team doing it too and they're like, oh, Oh, now I see. <laughs> so it happens. All right. So there we go. That's it. Oop, left a chunk of something on there, but that's it for the card front. So super easy. And again, a really pretty winter scene and the paper does it all. I mean, really all you have to do is stamp the images, die cut, and it's done. So very, very easy. On the inside of the card, again, I kept it pretty simple with just the sentiment here from the Tidings and Trimming stamp set, which I'll pull out again in a second. This is one that is in the current annual catalog. Um, so take a peek at that if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but it's a good one and it's got its own set of dies that we're not using today, but um, it does have its own set of dies. Yeah, I don't know that it's a good set of paper. Yeah, you definitely want to get it. So, <laughs> and I've got basic gray ink here again that I'm using to stamp the sentiment in. And I'm going to try to get it lined up fairly straight. Um, again, is it the end of the world if it's not straight? No, but I try to try to not stamp anything that's too crazy looking. 
So, and then I'm gonna ink that cabin image again, doing the same thing that I did on the outside with basic gray ink. And I'm just gonna take and stamp it over the edge of my piece of basic white cardstock. The basic white cardstock is cut four by five and a quarter. And the cab is a little crickety, but I think it'll still work. Since it's inside of the card, hopefully nobody will notice. <laughs> so, all right. Um, let me use a little step and seal to adhere the two pieces together, or adhere inside the card base. And then we're going to be all done for the day today. So thanks for joining. I appreciate you being here. Um, let me know if you have questions about this. Again, the details will all be posted on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com. And I've got look all over my piece of paper here so um all right so again i will be sharing all the details sharing the blog post link to this uh project on my blog tomorrow and i'll link it up in the description of the video so you can come take a peek at it um, anytime if you, again if you want to grab the measurements or figure out what products i used on it all that will be listed out in my blog post tomorrow so thanks again for joining i appreciate you being here have a fantastic rest of your friday uh, enjoy your weekend and we will chat again i don't know probably next week i will plan to be live around two o'clock eastern time on my facebook page and then back here around or two o'clock eastern time on tuesday sorry <laughs> then i'll be back here around two o'clock eastern time on friday um, with another project so thanks so much for joining today and we will chat soon